not led Argentina to one of these major trophies. Does that have to weigh in how you judge him in historical terms as one of the great footballers? Does that come into it? Will, it will do in the end, yeah. I mean, if you're talking about Maradona and uh, what he did in World Cup finals in, in his time, then they're going to look to see what has Messi done in his, and in the end, he hasn't quite done as much as Maradona by, by a long way at the moment. So, you know, it's a shame, really, because a player of his outstanding talent, you want to see those dribbles, you want to see those magical goals and those magical moments. And tonight, we, we just didn't see it from... I, well, he is. We know he's the best player, certainly at club level in the world. Uh, but obviously, at international level, he hasn't quite proven that. Pat? And oddly, I would expect um, him to enjoy international football more than club football, because inter international football is much more technical, or it certainly used to be. But his club football is different, though, because a lot of his club football is Champions League, top level, Spain, etc. So it's very technical. Anyway, um, I think he's playing with a team. In Barca, that's better than everybody else a lot of the time, and he gets a hell of a lot more ball and at home. But I'm not going to talk him down in any way. Uh, he's fabulous. He's one of the greatest players ever. I don't know. I, I, I hate to call it between him and Maradona, who I thought was the best that I've seen. Um, but you can't argue that Maradona did more in the international stage. There is no argument there. There's a man who wasn't needed tonight, Carlos Tevez. You just wonder That's what, another what, difficult well, one to explain away, isn't it? What's he done? There's, there must be something personal yeah. that's gone on with the manager. Agree with that. You know, if you'd have played him with Aguero, you know, they're, they're too... They're so vivacious in what they do. They, they work so hard, tirelessly. They put people under pressure. They chase lost causes. They run in behind. Imagine those two up front with Messi in behind. Mm. It would be a phenomenal combination. Messi would get so much more time and space because, you know, Chile would have had to drop deeper. You know, trying to stop those runs in behind. As, as Sam says, I, I think the tactics from Argentina, they, they choked, especially in the second half. They had an uh, opportunity to go for it and they didn't. Danny, at the same time, for Chile tonight, we've got men like Isla, yeah. didn't do it in the Premier League. Others in this yeah. side, Medel, who, you know, have been, with every respect, journeymen. Beausajour, you know, he's hardly torn up trees when he's played in English football. Va Vargas as well. Yeah. These are the guys of the heroes. Well, we, we said beforehand, sometimes home soil, you know, yeah. that crowd behind them, it gives you that extra 10% energy. You know, and they needed that tonight. They were high tempo from the off. I was concerned at half-time. Sometimes half-time's a, ba half a bad thing. You don't want it to come, you know, when you're doing well. But they came out and they started the second half in the same vein. And they just tirelessly worked and worked and worked. You know, Vidal, absolutely outstanding. The amount of work that he gets through is absolutely incredible. Did it in the Champions League final. You know, just tirelessly just ran and ran and ran. And they all just ran themselves into the ground. And you have to say, on the balance of play, their hunger was more, their desire was more, and, and in the end they deserved it. Maybe the, you could make some sort of argument that a lot of the Argentinian players are playing at a higher level for longer and probably make them a little bit more tired at this point in the season than some of the Chilean players. You could make that argument and add it to the extra 10, 15% you get from what Danny's talking about there. But in the end, Isla versus Zabaleta. Who would you generally usually pick as a better player? Zabaleta. You could do that through you, the whole 11 yeah, versus You have 11, a look at it tonight. I, d I don't know. Both say so Joe and Rojo. I think I'm hard to say both say Joe and Rojo. I mean, Rojo. To be fair, you look at that back line Argentina. Maybe that's why. Maybe they were fearful. Because Roro did not have a good day. Zabaleta was very, very quiet, not getting forward anywhere near the way he used to. There's a 12th man here, the Chilean fans. Huge, yeah. Huge, Absolutely. huge support. And people don't give, don't know what that sort of support does to a player when he goes out and the hair stand up on the back of his neck representing the And I think that's why Chile got that extra 10% out of the out of the team and I think that helped an awful lot tonight as well as good tactics from the coach and the players gave absolutely everything and uh, fully deserved the victory. Will the agents <laughs> yes. start to look more closely at what, what Chilean football has produced? This is a, a, no doubt about that. To a degree a golden generation wasn't it yeah. that came together 2007, 8, 9? The whole of the whole of this underage the whole of this tournament will be watched intensely by all European clubs because there's so many players now coming from South America 
and uh, and from uh, no, uh, from Africa. But that that will be the shopping market certainly in the next two weeks, and lots of agents will be ringing up. I think all the European countries. They play at a fantastically high tempo, but they play with great technical ability mm -hmm. at the same time. You know, and, and that is very very hard. You know, to, to find in this day and age. You can you can get one, you can get the other. To get both together is a rarity, but they've got lots of players that can do that. Always helps when you've got a goalkeeper on top of his game, as Claudio Bravo has been throughout the tournament. Yeah, it has. It didn't have that much to do, did he? Well, he's he? Get his hands on the big trophy. Didn't have that much to do today. And that's why. Shared the penalty. You know, and that's yeah. he just turned up, walked up. And walks up with the glory, and he's, he's having a lovely day. And it often happens for the goalkeepers in these situations. But any, I, I have to say, I'm just happy. I, before the game, I, I was looking for a lovely moment for Messi. But in the end, no, actually, the team that goes out and plays with the passion, the heart, and the spirit, we were all changed. We were all tumbling the yeah, way we through were. that game. Yeah. There's one thing that's dangerous, though, is signing a player off this tournament <laughs> because they may be playing well above themselves. Oh, what maybe maybe that is the best example of the example, lot there, yeah. Vargas. I mean, like we said before, that some of these players have been in the Premier League and not quite done it, but today they've done it for themselves and they've done it for the country and they've done it for the family. Top scorer in the tournament, Eduardo Vargas. Well, he never looks as if he's going to score a goal tonight. No, but, <laughs> but, and the big but being, he worked and he worked and he worked and he chased and he closed down and he did everything possible to make sure that no one was comfortable in the ball at the back there for Argentina. And that just drags them back a little bit and it allows your team to push up that bit further. Well, he was defending I right remember the front. Chile played England at Wembley a few years back. And in the first half, they ripped them to shreds. You know, Sanchez was amazing. That, that pace. They did it to Spain a couple of years oh, ago that down pace, in that the as well. They, they, they were the sensational. And, and England just could not cope with it. And, I, I think we and they've done similar things this evening. We, do, we don't think the same way anymore. I think the World Cup was the final under, underlining it three times in red pen. Don't look at Paraguay, don't look at Chile, don't look at Peru as secondary nations. Because they ain't. These are teams that could take on anyone and have a go at them, including your Brazils, including your Argentina. Only edged out but in that infamous penalty shootout, thanks to Neymar. It, and I know uh, this, is, this isn't a fluke. These are good teams, these are top teams. Particularly when they, were, they are playing in South America, it seems to make a big difference as well. So this is a surprise, but absolutely not a shock. That Chile are walking away with this trophy to it. I don't think it's a shock that these teams are right up there now because most of the players are coming out of their own countries and coming to Europe to play, gaining that experience and then going, going back to play for their own country. And all the experience they've gained in Europe, wherever it might be, stands the club, stands the national team in very good stead. I mean, you know, with 78% of players in the Premier League now are foreign players, like you mean. It's harmful for England, there's no doubt about that, but for them, they seem to go back to their own countries and play that much better on the experience they've gained at club level all over the world now. It's also a feat of uh, worthy of respect that they actually make the trip to play for their country as often as they do. We overlook well, that very I think, often, don't we? Again, that, that's part of the desire. You know, even the likes of Messi, they will, tr they will play nearly every single international, you know, fly halfway around the world. Mexican players will do it, Chilean players will do it, you know, Brazilian players will do it. There, there is such a pride, especially in South America, of representing your country. You know, they will travel around the globe twice and then come back and play on a, on a Saturday or Sunday. Because the, we can see that the, the passion that they have for football in, in South America is just is unrivaled. It's absolutely incredible. What do you think Manchester City might do with Aguero now, Sam? Should they give him a little break? Uh, I think off. they should give him. Um, well, I don't think they should consider playing him at the start of the season. And Premier League does start early. Start the this time. as well. I think that uh, they've got to. If they want to, if they want to, mind you, it depends how much under threat the manager thinks his job is. Um, but I think if he thinks he's nice and safe, then he's going to have to give those players a rest. And uh, what four or five weeks? Four, yeah, four weeks minimum. Otherwise, it's burnout time. They might well be able to start the season but by Christmas they'll be on the knees and they may get a lot of injuries and we all know today that injuries are playing such a massive part in your in your season now and they are, they're, they're a huge blow to any team even as big as Manchester City if you get the wrong injuries for a period of time. Not a good night for Manchester United supporters Pat is it really? Di Maria 
Yeah, do me a yeah, Rocco, as you said, unhappy performance tonight. Yeah, uh, unhappy is being kind. Um, I think he was totally shreds down that side. I think he looked ponderous, slow, um, fearful. Um, he just he was outclassed tonight. Uh, it looked about the weakest player in that Argentinian side. Maybe he's suffering a little bit for his first season in English football, which many players do. Um, but to be fair, he looked pretty, pretty average tonight. Um, but you know, don't, don't take too much out of this tournament. You know, it is the end of the season. But there was a number of players tonight who, who let, let themselves down. Um, and they were mostly in blue, and they're mostly walking by us right now, looking a bit fed up. Yeah. <laughs> Rightly uh, so. I'm afraid, getting used to coming second. I can't see the coach keeping his job, can you? Well, oddly enough, he, his changes didn't make any positive no. effect, and he didn't get the best no. out of his players. And that's your job as a coach, isn't yeah, it? It is. I thought it was... It's never very easy at the best of times. It never well is, know. as I well know, yes. <laughs> Martin Fisher, back to you. Thank you, Paul. Yes, uh, talking about horrible familiarity of this experience, Gerardo Martino, of course was in charge of Paraguay four years ago when they were runners-up, having lost the final to Uruguay. So the Argentine coach having some unfortunate deja vu, and many of these Argentine players themselves were involved in that World Cup final 12 months ago. Plenty of tears around. Didn't produce the goods over the 120 minutes. Didn't command the tie as many expected them to, and then too many penalty takers lost their nerve. And Mascherano now has lost three Copa America finals, and that is an unwanted record, Brian. He's the only player that's ever done that, lose three finals, and as his coach, Martino. Yeah, I mean, that's a sad fact for him, because he's an outstandingly good player, and his efforts tonight were, were great for his team. Playing again in that central midfield role, sitting there, trying to break the play up, trying to set the play up, but never at any time did the midfield of Argentina run the game. Pastore was... Well, we didn't really see a lot of them. Pelia never really saw it. It didn't provide, I feel, with the, the strike force they had, with the sort of ammunition they had. So it really, in areas, and I know the lads in the studio have touched on it, in areas around the pitch, if you look at both teams, you would mark probably the Chilean team individually more than, than each of the collective uh, 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 of Argentinian side. So, despite... The team performance, individual performances were far in excess on the home home team. They played better all over the park, and it really was a night for them. Had they not won that penalty shootout, I mean, I think everybody would have looked at it and go, well, you know, undeserved. Uh, and, and really, I think Argentina got what, not what they deserved, that's a bit harsh, but at no stage did they really open out. At no stage did they want to take the game to the opposition. Even if you look back to the substitution, Di Maria coming off, could he have thrown Tevez on there? Looking at the opposition, a weakened back four, Tevez and Aguero up there, and as, as has been said, Messi in behind, could that have changed it? Obviously, you can talk about that forever now, but there was not, no positivity came out of their side tonight. And on the back of that, there's been some superb performances from the Chilean players, and they richly deserve this tonight, without a doubt. It's going to be some party in Santiago this evening. Argentina have exited stage left. We saw that shot there of Javier Mascherano just having a, a last look at the elusive Copa America trophy. It's difficult to imagine that in next year maybe he'll be back. Of course, there's a centennial Copa America next year, so maybe Mascherano will still be around 32 next year. Yeah, he probably will be, so he might have one last crack at it. But tonight belongs to Chile. The golden generation, they've been calling this team. They've uh, quitted themselves well in the last couple of World Cups. Very unfortunate to go out in the last 16 on penalties. Last year, from Belo Horizonte to the hosts, Brazil. And this time, they as hosts have won the penalty shootout. And this is a night that they will always remember. It's a night that they've been dreaming of for so, so long. So many in red stepped up to the plate and produced this evening. Yeah, I think, as I've said, individually, collectively, by far, they're outstanding. Vidal, 
because of his versatility. He did a bit of everything tonight, started a little bit deeper, ended up up top, worried the opposition the whole time. Isla as a right back, overlapped all night long. I mean, Sanchez, for all we've said, he hasn't been the standout player that we might have hoped. What about his work rate tonight? What about the way he kept challenging down the channels, running at the opposition? I thought he was outstanding. And then the lesser players, Medell, who's been mentioned, you know, come to the Premier League, didn't really work for him. What a great performance back there. I thought he was great. Adam Guise, for me, I mean, I thought he was great tonight. Fouled a lot, but my word, he was up and down and every. It was just so much a blanket of red shirts tonight who won all the battles. And that in itself just give them this deserved win. It's a fantastic night for them all. Terrific scenes. Terrific noise. And it's been constant throughout the evening. There was some doubt about Chile's quality at the start of this competition. But they have grown in stature. And the support has got bigger and bigger has reached its climax this evening. Chile were there at the very first Copa America back in 1916. And they've waited until 2015 to win the competition. If Argentina won it tonight, it would have been their 15th success. But tonight belongs to Chile. Runners up four times. Prior to tonight, their best moment was in the 1962 World Cup Finals. They hosted that one, you might recall, beat in the semi-finals by Brazil, but this memory will eclipse that. Because tonight, silverware. I think that picture sums it up. It's not just the team, it's their families. I mean, it's everything there. You just can tell what it means to them. Look at that. I mean, more often than not, you'd have the squad of players up there. No, they've got everybody they can. No wonder it took them so long to uh, construct that stage. It, it needs to uh, hold quite a few people. That is a wonderful picture, isn't it? And those flags have been waved enthusiastically. Most of the evening, many of the crowd inside the stadium a good two or three hours prior to kickoff. And as Sam Allardyce was saying, they have been the 12th man this evening. They have cajoled and encouraged their team right to the end. And that penalty shootout success. Fernandez, Vidal, Alan Guise, and Sanchez all scored. Only Messi of Argentina managed it. And Guerrero blasting over the bar. And Bravo saving from Benega. And Claudio Bravo, Bravo somewhere in there will be making his way to the middle. And there he is, just waiting for his cue. And he's already received the uh, best goalkeeper of the competition trophy. His fourth clean sheet in six games, plus the penalty save. And now, here comes the moment that every Chilean football fan has been waiting for for far too long. The Copa America belongs to Chile. Team that deserved it. 
Chile are the winners of the 2015 Copa America. Brian Little and Martin Fisher, thanks to you both. Great effort throughout the night and even over what has turned into a very lengthy presentation party, with obvious reason. Danny Mills, what would be your favourite moment from the tournament as a whole? I just think the, the final, really. I, you know, hard work beats talent all the time. You know, we looked at the teams on paper, you know, and, and you pretty much pick probably nine of the Argentinian teams over the, the, the Chile players. But hard work, determination, desire, togetherness, has brought them together. Sadly for a lot of those fans, they're probably not going to remember this over the next couple of days. <laughs> I think the party might be that extreme. Well, so the keeper's on the crossbar, look, already. And he's not even started. I think even Scottish. <laughs> so I think, um, yeah, Chile might be in um, celebration mode for, I think, the next probably three or four days. Exactly so. As ever, it's about the next generation to a degree, Pat. Individuals, maybe not just from the final, but from... The entire tournament players yeah, I, to watch. Well, I've, li I've liked the positivity of a lot of the.